Okay, push this back. 24 hours later, it's kind of cured. It's a bit tacky. I'm still getting some residue off, but it's strong enough to hold its form. So, it's not dry enough to work with, but it's not drying that well inside this frame. pieces off very carefully lever it away or if it's the paper one carefully um, flex it a bit if you can and gently lift up this is where your oil is going to come in very handy as you can see it's still pretty damp in there so we're going to let this dry for another 12 hours now that it's getting more room to breathe Okay, 12 hours later, got a pretty dry block. It won't finish curing for at least a week, and it takes a month to completely fully cure, but you can use it after about a week. Because our clay is in there, you have to very, very slowly pry it up little by little. Because if you pull it up too fast, you can lose some grout in between your clay tunnels, or your clay may not separate fast enough. So you can see a few spots where there's a little bit of oil where I didn't quite settle it fast enough. And there's those air bubbles I was talking about. Nothing harmful, just hurts the look a little bit. Doesn't bother me. So, now that this is free of the clay, you want to let it dry another, I don't know, 5 to 8, 12 hours if you want. You can drill it now. For the first 48 hours after this point, it will be at its softest, especially your sanded grout. After about 24 hours, this starts to turn very hard and you'll need steel bits or concrete bits to chew through it. Okay, put this to the side. And this is now reusable. This particular one, I'll just drill a small hole right there. Now allow me to water it instead of using the tubing. Okay, after about your hours have passed, it's pretty hard, it can take some torture. The edges are still a little bit brittle with the sanded grout, but once he completely cures, you're not going to do much damage to him. So, our ants can't get in here at the second, nor can we water it. Let's fix that. Because this makes a mess, I'm going to use the tray. I like easy cleanup. I like using 7 16 by 5 16 for the tubing. It'll allow one or two carpenter ants to pass the Campanatus, or it'll allow the smaller ants to bring even a piece of mealworm in. Unfortunately, I only have a 5 8 or a 5 8 bit. So, I have to make the hole a little bit bigger. Uh, if your watering one is down on the bottom, do not drill where your water line is. With, our, with your luck, we'll probably hit it. So, drill on the opposite side. I made this tunnel right here a little bit deeper just for this purpose. Uh, you, you can drill straight in from the back if you like. I've seen that design lots. I prefer to hide the tunnels, so... Because my tubing is so much bigger than the bit, I'll have to widen the hole on this side. Just like that. So your ants aren't going to hide where you can't see them, but your tubing is still hidden from your end piece. And I will later on drill a small hole up here. I don't have that bit with me at the second. And then, you can paint your surface if you want, just don't paint in the tunnels. Mm -hmm. 
You can use any acrylic paint, the non-toxic ones. It works just fine. The scientists will often use them in experiments to mark the ants. Okay, now that once we've painted it, move this out the way again. Always like a clean workspace. I put this piece of vinyl here to avoid messes, so. Once we're done and we've siliconed everything in, then we, it's all nicely siliconed, our water tunnel's up here. With ones with the watering tunnel, once you pull it out, you can actually use a pliers to carefully pull this up about half an inch or so. It hides the tube from down here. And it gives you a nice little area because you can see how full the water comes up in here as it drains down slowly. Okay. Now, take your piece of glass. We're going to put it on. Make sure there's no wobbles. I did this on a big piece of glass. There is no wobble. If there is a wobble, you'll kind of have to find it. It's sometimes a piece of sand, sometimes a piece of grout. You just got to track it down. Now, we have to make sure this is clean. I did clean this earlier, but I noticed I put a fingerprint on it when I picked it up. Because so once you glue this on, you're never going to be able to clean it again. At least the inside piece. Okay, that side's clean. We'll carefully put that side face up so we can get it dirty. Okay. We use aquarium sealant. It's 100% silicone rubber. There's no additives to it. Lots of your ones from like the hardware store will have like anti-mold properties or something and that's very toxic to ants. You can find some that are 100% silicone, but use at your own risk. I have used them. We're going to put a thin layer around the outside and around the watering tunnel. If we don't, the water will slowly seep along the grout and fill up all your bottom, bottom things with water, which we don't want. So, you don't need much of a bead. It flattens out pretty good when you push the glass to it. It makes unsightly gobs. Okay, that looks good. There's no breaks. Let's so put a tad bit more up here. And that's that. Okay, so now we pick up our glass carefully along the edges. The stuff that comes out of picture frames is really sharp on the edge, so be, either be very careful or take a piece of sandpaper and lightly sand down the edges. I've got a few cuts out of this, so drill out of the way, put that out of the way. Very, very, very carefully lower this on. Line up the edges. Your grout shouldn't be bigger than your piece of glass, or it's not going to fit in your frame. You can use a razor blade or even a wooden ruler to sand it down while it's damp. It'll sand pretty easily. Okay, push it down. You can see the color changes for where it's sealing. If you're really worried afterwards, you can take some silicone with a piece of rubber glove or plastic and wipe it on the edges, and that'll make sure they stay. Okay, it's all sealed. There's no leaks. Now, we have to put some weight on it and let it dry very carefully. And what else good is a 10-pound thing you grow good for besides weighing stuff down? Okay. That has to dry for about at least five hours before you start playing with it. And <clears throat> once it is dry, we're going to take your picture frame and your formicarium. Most of your picture frames have these. I've never had them get any piece of glass past me when folded straight up. There's just takes too much room out of the way. So let's just remove those. They usually pop out with a few good tugs. OK. 
Okay. There's that. There's our frame. Fits nicely. Sometimes with some of them you'll have to take an exacto blade or your drill and if your tube is too high, just drill a little piece here out to allow the tube to run through. This one was just the right height, so we're lucky. Yeah, there's a little bit of give there, we'll have to center that. Okay, so silicone. If you try and do the whole inner piece here, it's going to ooze out over the edge and you're going to see it. It's not going to look good. So, we're going to put a small dab in the corner. Bear with me. I'll explain this all in the end. Spread it out a bit. It doesn't take much and you don't want to mess afterwards. If you get messy, toothpicks are wonderful things. There it goes, to fix up little bits of silicone here and there. Okay, now that those four dabs are on, we're going to carefully lower him in. Pin him there. If there's no messes oozing out the corner, that's good. As you can see, you can see past it. We'll fix that later. It's because the grout's a little bit different. So, we are going to Squeeze a nice big blob in here, all along the cracks. And then we're going to press it down afterwards to give it a good tight seal. It'll prevent the grout from falling out of the frame. And if any ants chew through, it'll give you time to catch them before they escape through the silicone and wood. Some of these gaps are pretty big, so it's going to take two or three. Where'd that toothpick go? Oh, there it is. Once again, useful to get into really tough, tough places. Okay. Using either a piece of plastic or a piece of paper towel, we're going to push everything down into the crack where it will seal to both surfaces. There we go. Now we're going to turn this over for a second. You can kind of see past it like that, so we're going to shift it. Oh, it's a little bit too far. There. I can't see out either way, really. So, we're going to put that to the side. He doesn't need any weight. Just one good push and he should stay himself. That can be used for lots of things. You can do lots of designs. But there it is in a nutshell. 